Hello everyone. Hey, I wanted to go over some basic statistics uh, using Excel. Um, Excel is very powerful and it has uh, several add-ins and options that you can uh, load into it that makes uh, doing statistics very easy. Uh, the first thing you'd want to do is um, go get the add-in itself for Excel and you would go into options and this dialog box would come up and um, then you'd go to add-ins and then you hit go. Once you hit go, you would actually find um, a couple of the different add-ins that are available. One of them is analysis tool pack. That's the one that you want to load. Uh, what I've done here is I placed a, a, a set of da a data set in here. Um, I just labeled it grades for simplicity. But basically, what what we're going to do is we're going to um, run some statistics on this data and see what it comes up with. So I'm going to go over to the corner and select data analysis. This is under the data group or under the data tab in the analysis group in Excel. And I'm going to select um, descriptive statistics and I'm going to hit OK. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, now I've done this before, but I'm, I would select the data range that I'm going to grab, which is this one. And the next thing I'll do is I'm going to select where I'm going to, um, what the, where the output's going to be. So I'm going to actually put this right here. Uh, it's just, just as good as any. And the next thing I would do is select the summary statistics option. And this will give me, if I hit OK, this will give me a very nice looking um, box or group of numbers that uh, has all the different statistics in it. Now some of you might look at these and wonder what some of these um, terms mean. And first of all I want to say that in this case what we're measuring is the statistical population instead of just a sample. So that means in other words all we are doing is we are um, taking a data sample the whole data sample rather than a data sample that is rep meant to represent or a partial sample that is meant to re represent all of the data. In raw statistics what you'll find is that the total population is usually indicated by a, a sigma sign. A sample is often represented by an X with a line over the top of it. The, the next um, the first item on the list here is the mean and it's basically simply the average. This is calculated by dividing the sum of the numbers in your data set by the numbers of datum in your data set. In this case, we would, we would basically divide the sum by uh, a, total of 30, uh, a total of 30 datum in the data set. The next one is standard error. Now, not a lot of people use this. Basically, it's an estimation of the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. In this case, uh, we use the total population. The next one is the median. Uh, the me median is uh, simply the number in the middle of an odd set of data. Um, now, if you were to arrange the data from smallest to largest, it would basically be the, the, the number that is in the value that is in the center of that that um, arrangement. Now if the data set is even you take the mean of the middle two numbers and that would become your uh, median. The mode is simply the most common number in a data set. Um, there is no mode if there is no um, repetitive number. There can be more than one mode, however. Um, for example, if there are two, the data set is considered bimodial. If there's more than um, if there's more than one or more than two modes, um, it would can be considered the data set would be considered uh, multimodial. Uh, the next item is standard deviation. Now, um, this is talked about a lot in statistics. It's probably one of the most common common terms that people. Um, talk about and this is basically is another word for the, the, the standard deviation of the mean. Simply speaking this is how much variation there is from the average. 
Um, the next one is sample variance. This basically represents how far the set of numbers is spread out. Um, that's, as far as I know, that's, that's what it means. Um, now, kurtosis isn't used very often. Um, I think I learned about it in statistics class, that and skewness. Skewness is used more often. Um, kurtosis is basically the measurement of whether the data, the data are peaked or flat relative to normal distribution. Um, that is a data set um, with a high kurtosis tend to have a distinct peak near the mean. Um, decline rather, it declines rather rapidly and um, has kind of a heavy tail to it. So if you're looking at a histogram, it's going to be a very sharp looking um, peak on a histogram. Now data set that has low cortasis is going to be kind of flat, so it'll be more of a a bubble shaped um, rather mean rather than a than a peak shaped. Skewedness basically means the measurement that um, it basically if it's if you're looking at a histogram, it's lacking symmetry. The distribution is going of the data set itself is going to um, it's going to either slide to the left or it's going to slide to the right of the center point, and that's what skewness means. It's kind of an irregular shape per se. Now the range is basically the difference between the highest and lowest values in your data set. Um, pretty straightforward. The same goes for uh, minimum and maximum. That is the smallest and the largest numbers in your data set. Of course the sum is the total if you um, the total of the values in your data set if you were to add them all together. And of course the final one here is count and that simply is the number of datum in your data set. In other words, how many records or how many pieces of data that you have in that data set. Now we can also take this a little bit further and um, create a histogram from this information in the data set that we already have. So if I go up to data analysis and select histogram, hit OK. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is highlight my input field. And now when it comes to the bin range, these are basically the numbers um, that represent the intervals that you want the histogram tool to use for measuring the input um, data for the, the data analysis. If you omit the, the bin range itself, Excel will create a set of evenly distributed bins between the minimum and maximum values to um, maximum values of the input data itself. I like to actually leave it empty. Um, you can also, if you want, you can specify which, um, which intervals you're looking for, but I like to leave that empty. Now, of course, the output range, we're going to, I'm just going to select something up, up here close to the top. You want to make sure that it also does a chart output and then you hit OK and it creates a histogram for you. Now when it comes to, we talked about bin a little bit, but when it comes to frequency that is basically the number of occurrences of a particular data set um, and um, of course each, each of these frequency points has its own range so that's why you see a lot of frequency around 92 uh, when the actual median is at 90, and that's just because of that range that the 92 uh, frequency or bin number holds. That's pretty much about it. Uh, if you have any questions, please send me an email.